Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video, we are going to discuss the difference between total year to date and the running total. During the video, we are going to discuss some important DEX functions such as sum x, total year to date, calculate, max, and count rows. How we can use these functions in order to build a running total. During the video, I'm not going to give you just the measure that can calculate the running total, but we are going to build it step by step together. Also, at the end of the video, we're going to look at a new functionality inside Power BI, which is new visual calculation, which also can help us to calculate the running total inside the visual itself. Let's go directly to Power BI, have a look on the example, and then we're going to see how we can calculate total year to date, running total, and finally, we're going to look at the new visual calculation. We have a matrix visual presenting the quarterly sales for two years, 2024 and 2025. The first measure in the first column is the sales value. It calculates the quarterly sales for each and every quarter separately. Also, we have the sales year to date, means that sales are accumulating each and every quarter until we reach the total year in quarter four. When we go to the next year, it resets and start to accumulate from quarter one up to quarter four until we reach the total of year two. Our third column containing the running sales total, which is behaves exactly the same like the sales year to date for the first year. However, when we move to the next year, it continue to accumulate until we reach the total of two years in Q4 second year. Let's go and have a look on the data that we have inside this model. We have a very simple model only two tables first one is all sales which is basically contains the sales data comes in four columns date price product and quantity also we have a calendar table i just created this inside power bi contains date and the most common date classification inside calendar tables such as month name month number quarter and year if you want to have more details about how to create a calendar table inside power bi i will leave a link on top of the screen right now. Also, we have a one-to-many relation between the calendar table and the all sales table. And for sure, the common column between the two tables will be the date column. From the table view, we are looking at the all sales table. You can notice that we don't have a column for the sales value. We need to calculate this. We have a column for price and also a column for quantity. The very basic thinking is to have another column here. This column, we can call it sales value. And then we start to multiply each and every line, price times quantity, and then we can easily get the total. However, we can do it in a much better way using the sum x function. Sum x function is one of the DEX iterator functions, and the basic functionality of such an iterator function is to go line by line inside a table and calculate a specific expression. In our case, the expression will be nothing but multiplication of the price times the quantity. And finally, because it is sum x, it will give you the summation of this new calculation or new expression. I'm going to select table tools and then new measure. This will prompt me directly to the formula bar. Let me give a name for this measure. I'm going to call it sales value and then equal. I'm going to use sum x and the first requirement will be a table which exactly the table that you want me to start to go line by line and calculate an expression for you. In our case, the table will be basically the all sales table. Then comma, the second requirement is what exactly the expression. The expression will be multiplying the price column times the quantity column. Again, I'm going to select the all sales. This time I'm going to select the price and then times all sales once more. But this time I'm going to select the quantity column and then close the bracket for some X and hit the check mark. I need to add a quick number formatting. Let me select currency and zero decimal place. Now we can go to our report view and start to put this inside the visual, the matrix visual that we have. On the right hand side, you will see the sales value measure. While selecting the visual, I'm going to add a check mark to the left of the measure and you can see here I have the sales value for each and every quarter separately. Now let's try to calculate the sales value year to date. We are very lucky that DAX 
has a ready function that can calculate the year to date for us in order to calculate the year to date i'm going to add a new measure i'm going to select the all sales table right click and a new measure this will take me back to the formula bar let me give another name to this measure sales value ytd equal we have a very useful function called total ytd you can notice that we have three functions for the same family total mtd total qtd and finally total ytd i'm going to select total ytd the requirement for this function first one is an expression we already have an expression or a measure that we use to calculate the total sales or the sales value in order to select a measure from the same model i'm going to open a square bracket we have only one measure tab we selected the sales value and then comma second requirement is the dates we have to provide a sequential list of dates for this function and this sequential date inside the model we can find it in the calendar table in the dates column so i'm going to provide the calendar table and then the date column and then close the bracket for this function hit the check mark quick number formatting currency and zero decimal place now we are ready we have a new measure called sales value while selecting the same visual i'm going to add a check mark next to the sales value year to date measure and here you go we have our sales year to date we can check the first quarter exactly the same like the sales value and then start to accumulate until we reach the total year in quarter four then it resets when we go to the year 2025 and start to accumulate again until we reach the 3.5 million which is basically the total of year two now let's go and try to calculate the running total together unfortunately we don't have a function that can calculate the running total directly so we need to build this together i can just write with you in a couple of minutes a very short measure that can calculate the running total and that's it however let's try to build it step by step and try to understand how we can reach this at the end before doing so let's try to agree on some concepts if you look at a measure like sales value when we drop it inside the measure you will see it takes different values based on the dimension selected inside the visual itself so 2024 quarter one has a value different from the value of q2 2024 and so on and so forth and this is what we call the filter context so based on the filter context the sales value measure is evaluated each time with a different value because all dimensions used inside this visual is date dimension so all of these columns the year column and the quarterly column is coming from the calendar table so all what we are seeing here all the filters that we are seeing here is about dates if you go to the sales year to date value you will find that this rule or this filter context is being changed meaning that in quarter two instead of looking at quarter two only we are looking at quarter two plus quarter one and so on and so forth in other words the number of days in quarter one which can be something like 90 days when we go to quarter two it changed from 90 to 180 and then in quarter three it accumulates to 270 and then quarter four 365 and so on and so forth so the whole story of this function says year to date is working on dates or manipulating the filtration on the dates now we need to do the same however we are going to build it using a function called calculate and the calculate is the function that can help us to manipulate the filters coming from the visual or to manipulate the filter context as an intermediate step i need to look at the number of days in each quarter inside the same visual so let me add a new measure right click and then new measure this will take me once more to the formula bar count of days and in order to see number of days in each and every quarter let me do a count of the calendar table so i'm going to use the function count rows the only requirement for this function is a table and in our case i need to count the rows of the calendar table so i'm going to provide the calendar table close the bracket and hit enter now we have a new measure count rows let me select the same visual and hit the check mark next to the count days and here you go as we expected we have in quarter one 91 days 91 days 92 days and 92 days total is 366 so far so good this measure working perfectly with the filter context and our next mission is try to manipulate this and to accumulate the days 
using the calculate function. In order to do so, and before jumping into calculate function, I need to add another measure, and this measure will calculate the ending date for each and every quarter. I'm going to the same all sales, right click, and then new measure. Let me call this max date. I'm going to use a very simple function called max. The requirement is a column name. Let me give the calendar table, and from calendar table, the date column close the bracket and hit enter let's try to use a good formatting i think for this one we can use short date now we have the new measure let me take the max date and put it inside the same visual and you will see that i have the max date for each and every quarter quarter one 31st march quarter two and then 30 september and then 31st december and so on and so forth in order to try to manipulate this measure the count of days and start to accumulate the number of days i'm going to do it using a comparison this comparison will be nothing but comparing the dates the range of dates that i have in each and every quarter with the max date that i have for each and every quarter in other words i'm going to ask if any date that i'm showing you is less than the end date of the quarter please take this date with you so in this case for quarter one I'm going to say I have 31st March as the last date or the end date. So it will take 91 days. But if I compare all the dates I have inside the model with the date 30 June 2024, this will count to 182. If I do the same for 30 September 2024, this will count to something like 274 and so on and so forth. In order to do so, let me try to use calculate. So I'm going to select the count of days function Going back to the formula bar, let me change this to running count of days. And before the count rows, I'm going to use the function calculate. And then calculate will require an expression. Expression this time will be my count rows. This will work perfectly as an expression. And then comma. And here is where we can do our filtration. You can see that the requirement is ex expression. And then filter one, we can add filter two, filter three, and so on and so forth. In order to do this comparison, I'm going to call the column date from the calendar table. So I'm going to type calendar and then date. If any date is less than or equal, the max date that I already calculated, let me just type it again or calculate it again. So I'm going to type max and then also calendar date. Close the bracket for max and then close the bracket for calculate and then hit the check mark. And let's look at the visual. You will see that I have the accumulation happening perfectly. 91 days in the first quarter, 182 days for the second quarter, 274 for the third quarter, 366. And when we go to the next year, you will see that it continue to accumulate until we reach 731 in Q4 in the second year. Now this measure is perfectly helping me to calculate the running total. And I'm going to do a very small change in the same measure. So let me select running count of days. And I'm going to change the name once more. Let me call it running sales value. The only change required is to change the count of rows to the measure that we use to calculate the sales value. Open square bracket and then we can just select the sales value. Hit the check mark. This time we need to change the format to currency and zero decimal place. And here you go. I have my running total. If you check the first year, exactly the same like the sales year to date. However, when we jump to the new year, it continue to accumulate until we reach the total of the two years together, which is basically the 6.3 million. If you feel that calculating running total using DAX is not an easy task, there is another way to do the same calculation inside the visual that we have, the matrix visual, in a very easy way. Actually, this will be using a new functionality in Power BI called new visual calculation. While selecting the same visual, I'm going to right click and you will find something called new visual calculation. And if you look at the menu that we have, we have a lot of calculation that you can add. Let's stick to the running sum. Once I select the running sum, it will open the focus mode of the visual. You can notice that there is a new column created and the small formula bar here, you can find that I can do my calculation. There's a built-in function called running sum and it requires a field. In order to edit inside this, I'm going to select this field. Then I can select one of the calculations that I have inside the same visual. 
for the moment let me select the sales value also i can change the default name you can see the name here the default name running sum let me call it running total and then hit the check mark here you go you have the calculation right here if i want to go back to my report i can go up from back to report and here you go you have the very same calculation running total and if you compare with what we calculated it is exactly the same there are a number of differences between calculating the running total using DAX or calculating it using the new visual calculation and this is exactly what we are going to discuss in the last part of the video. The first difference between these two ways of calculation is that the DAX calculated running total can be used everywhere inside your model. If you look at your all sales table you will find that we have here the running sales value which can be used inside any visual. Let me select any empty space in the canvas. And if I take this here, you can find that I can create another visual so I can just use it anywhere. If you try to check for the other one, which is called running total, you will not find any field called running total. However, once you select your visual, and if you look in the build visual tab down here, you will see our calculation, the running total calculation, which can be used only inside this, the same visual that we created in. This is the first difference and a very important one. The second important difference is that if I try to remove the original field, which is basically the sales value that I used in order to create the running total, let me try to do so. I'm just deleting this. You will find that the visual is not working. You have either to remove the running total or to put back the sales value, which I'm going to do right now. On the other hand side, let me try to remove everything except for the running sales value. So I'm going to remove the running total calculated inside the visual. I'm going to remove the max date. I'm going to remove the sales value, the sales value you to date, and you have no problem. The visual is working perfectly. These are the two main differences of calculating the running total. One inside the visual itself using the new visual calculation and the other one using the DAX measure. Actually, if you think about the new visual calculation functionality that we have now in our visuals, it is pretty much similar to show value as inside the pivot tables in Excel. You can use any calculation inside the pivot table. However, this calculation is used only in the pivot table. You cannot use it anywhere inside your Excel model or Excel workbook. That was all for today. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe and leave me a comment and we'll catch you in next video. Bye.